92.1 WROI, WROIFM.com. Streaming audio live on RTC Channel 5 and soon to be audio and video on RTC Channel 4. That's why Scott's back with us today. Morning, Scott. Good morning, sir. I like your hat. Thanks. It says Channel 4 on it. It does. Yeah, it does. It's just in case anybody couldn't see it, it says <laughs> Channel 4. Brian Johnson joins us from the Community Foundation for our monthly program. Brian, good morning. Good morning, Tom. Thank you for being here. Well, I'm glad I was able to make it down here. I didn't have to transverse any puddles or... No canoeing or anything. No, right? Just no. kind of walked right second, on down. The sun was popping out. But yeah, it was. It was trying so to for a minute. It's exciting, I guess. I'm not sure which... <laughs> I haven't decided which season it is today. So. I don't think the we'll, seasons know yeah. what season they're in. Yeah. Well, hey, we've got a lot of things going on at the okay. Foundation. Springtime is when a lot of things start happening. Um, one thing that I wanted to say thank you to WROI and everybody, um, of course, Valentine's Day, February 14th. This was the 20th annual Give Your Heart to the Community Valentine's Day event. Um, was very successful. Um, we raised a little over $7,000 for different funds within the community, um, which will go on um, to make grants year after year. Um, Looking at the numbers, there were 42 dedications sent out on WROI, so okay. thank you to you and to Larry and Linda for hosting that program. I they did a nice job. They I, they're did. not Don, but they did a nice no. job. You know? Yeah. I caught a few glimpses of that program <laughs> as I was riding around delivering Valentine's. Sounds like you guys had a lot of fun with we that. We did. So, we really enjoyed so it. So it was thank good you night. to um, everybody that supported that. Thank you to you and Sue and the sure. staff here at WROI. Paul did a good um, job pulling the music for us. Yeah, and maybe we, we all can set. compliment Baron on the weather. He ordered right. up a really perfect good day babe. for us. So um, thank you to everybody who donated and helped make that event a success. So. Um, a couple of things, scholarship applications, um, high school seniors, you still have a little bit of time, but not much. The deadline for those applications is March 2nd, which is this Friday. It is, right. So if you've started that process and have not completed it, um, please make sure you do so. There probably is time to get an application in if you haven't started it and, and looking for something. I, I spoke with Allison yesterday, and she said, make sure you encourage students to make sure that they've got their letters of recommendation. That's one thing that often gets left out, and um, we'd hate to see somebody not be able to qualify for a scholarship because they forgot to get a piece. So if you have questions about that, um, whether you've completed it or not, the system should show you. But if you have questions or concerns about um, if you've done everything that you need to for those scholarships, don't hesitate to give um, Allison a call, and we can make sure that those applications are complete. Or if you have any trouble with the, the process, um, we we want to try and make it as user-friendly as possible, so we're always here to help. So, okay, good. Um, don't hesitate to give us a call. Make sure you get the application complete by this Friday. So, A couple other things that we have um, going on. The Fulton County Women's Giving Circle Grant applications are now available. Um, this is um, was started in 2010 by a group of local women and uh, members make a donation every year and part of that donation is used to build an endowment fund and the other part is used to make grants in the community so this year they have um, a few thousand dollars available to grant um, looking for projects probably in the 500 to a couple thousand dollar range um, they usually fund three to four to five projects throughout the community um, the application is available on our website, nicf.org, and they are due April 2nd. So if folks, what about a month for those? Yeah, if folks have an idea for that, um, there's really not any restrictions on types of projects. It just has to benefit Fulton County and, and Fulton County residents. So um, I'd encourage folks to check that out if you have something that you think may fit for that. Another application that we have is the Kiwana Union Township Community Endowment Fund. That fund was um, started um, by a local group of, of people through a matching program through the Community Foundation and helps make um, projects possible in the Union Township area. Excellent. So like in the past, um, things like the library, things like the Fall Festival, um, the Hardery is a new organization in that area. Um, 
have benefited from that fund. So um, the application is also available on our website, NICF.org. Um, have a little bit more time on that one. The deadline is May 7th for that, and we have up to $2,500 available as a grant from that fund. So that could be all for one project or it could be for multiple yeah. projects. So if you have a project in mind um, that would benefit residents in the Kiwana and Union Township areas, it encourage folks to check out that grant application. Um, also a reminder, this is um, our third year doing no deadline grant applications. And so um, our grant applications for our community support grants and also our impact grants are available. Um, and if, if folks are looking for those, we've already gotten some and we'll be reviewing those in the near future. But um, if you have an idea for a project or something that you think may be of interest to the Community Foundation, I'd encourage you to give us a call or stop by and, and talk to us, and we'll see if that's something that we can help with. Um, it's been very good to have this open application. I was going to ask you, how, how is that working out in terms of not having the deadlines? Well, it's worked really well because what we would see in the past is we would have a deadline, say, maybe of October 1st, and then grants would be decided upon November 1st. But what would happen if you had a project that happened in the springtime? Um, you run into the situation of organizations almost have to plan a year ahead to be able to apply for a grant. And a lot of times, especially with smaller projects, those ideas are not even thought of until a few months before. So so this has been very good um, for us to be able to respond more quickly to projects. Now, if you have a larger project, say like a building project or something like that, that would fall under the impact grant, um, those take a little bit more time to go through the process, but um, that letter of intent can be filled out at any point and submitted if it's just an idea for a new project or something that you say, hey, this is six months out, but we want to start the planning process. Um, but especially for those smaller grants where we get a few hundred or a few thousand dollars where a project, a need comes up throughout the year that maybe wasn't a need at the start of the year, it's been very useful for us to be able to respond and not have to say, Good oh, point. you need this money in sure. June. Well, our next application is due in October. Right. So it's it's been very good for us to be able to react. And a lot of the reason why we're able to do that is because our community funds have grown. Donors have supported that through the latest Lilly match um, and just the availability of those funds do to be able still- to do... No, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. Do you still set aside, though, so much money to grant in a particular year? We do. Okay. We do. So last year, we had about $200,000 that we were able to grant out um, to different projects. Um, And this year, we'll have about the same. Um, So that that is, we really can't go over that number. But um, as we work with it, a lot of times we'll talk with organizations, especially if you're looking at larger grants. There's some organizations that we've been talking with for two or three years that they aren't quite ready to apply for it. But once they are, it's probably going to be a fifty or sixty thousand dollar grant. Okay. Um, so a lot of times there's ways that we can fit those funding in, even if maybe we don't have the funds at the moment. Um, so I just always encourage folks come talk to us, let us know what's going on so we can kind of make a better decision planning out into the future. So if you have a project that's going to happen next year, that's a $50,000 project, probably now is a good time to come talk to us just so that we can kind of know that it's out there and and make some plans to um, know how to allocate some of those funds. Okay, good. It's, but that's been, that's been probably one of the best things that I think that we've been able to do and be more reactive to community needs in the time that the needs arise rather than making the community fit our timeline of what we have the application. So, um, but again, all those applications, um, the Fulton County Women's Giving Circle, the Kiwana Union Township, and our community support and impact grants are available at NICF.org. Um, folks can get the application if you look it over and have questions about it. Um, we're always here. We try and make it. I always tell people, if you can tell me about your project, you can complete your grant, our grant application. We don't want it to be where you have to go out and hire somebody to complete a grant application because really what we're trying to support is 
local people right. doing good things in our community. So we don't want to make it really difficult for somebody to be able to get the funding that they may need. So, well, that covers our current events. Um, what I wanted to do today was kind of continue our talk about um, some of the kind of the milestones in the okay. Community Foundation. Um, last month, we talked a little bit about the 1998 through 2000 time frame, and I'm going to split off a little bit from um, that timeline and talk a little bit about some of the specific areas that have happened. And one of the things that we've seen that has really benefited our community is the state gifts. Um, those are things that happen um, because donors have had some sort of involvement or want to see something happen um, specific in our community. So I, I kind of looked at um, four different things. And the neat thing about this is that you don't have to be independently wealthy to be able to do this. I mean, we've received estate gifts that are over a million and a half dollars. Mabel Blackers is one that I'll talk about here in a second, but we've also received estate gifts that may be just a few hundred dollars. Somebody was involved in something and they want to want to show that continued support through their estate gift. And so part of the goal of the foundation is to make that accessible to everybody so that my gift and your gift can all make a difference together in a big way. So um, just kind of looking at some of the some of the gifts that um, to highlight, and this is not an exhaustive list, but just kind of some of the different sizes and different aspects. Um, Mabel Blacketer. The Blacketer name is pretty um, synonymous with a lot of things in Rochester. We have the Blacketer Sports Complex that um, came from the Blacketers. Um, and when Mabel passed away, um, she had some organizations she was involved with and wanted to see those continue to support. Um, so she actually created four new funds and added to one fund that was already in existence through her estate. Um, of course, she was involved with Woodlawn Hospital. Um, people remember her for being a friendly face when you walked into Woodlawn <laughs> exactly. Hospital. had volunteered so much of her time and put so much effort um, to help support that organization. So um, one of the funds she created actually benefited Woodlawn Hospital. And through that, they've been able to do some renovations to things like the walking trail, um, repair parking lots, make some improvements, um, some capital improvements at the hospital. And have an ongoing legacy of what Mabel was involved with at Woodlawn. Um, First Baptist Church was another organization that she was very involved with. So um, she left a fund to the church to be able to help support some of the capital expenditures there as well. Um, Mabel was a board member of the Community Foundation, wanted to see that go on and so she actually created an operating endowment that helps support the community foundation and the neat thing about that is through that operating endowment it really helps support everything else that the community foundation does it, it helps us to have some ongoing funding so that we can then support things like grants or scholarships in the community um, she also of course a lot of the things that she did were in memory of her son, Brent. Right. And so um, there was a scholarship that was already in existence, um, the Brent Blacketer Memorial Scholarship that helps um, provide a pretty significant amount of support to Rochester High School graduates. And so that scholarship um, continues to carry on Brent's name and um, support students that are graduating this year, even though though Brent has been gone for 60 plus years right. and Mabel for um, going on 10 years, um, that name is still supporting students in Rochester. And then she also created a fund that um, helps support local um, health organizations. So things like the Compassionate Health Center that are helping folks that may not be able to afford their um, their medical treatment sure. or insurance or not have enough insurance. And so um, those are some things that it's kind of neat to look at. Through that glimpse, you kind of see some of the things that, if you didn't know Mabel, some of the things that she was involved with and some of the things that were really important to her. So um, kind of neat to see that. Another fund that was established, and it's kind of interesting, this again is one that was established while the donor was still alive, um, the Hoffman Fund. The Fulton County Historical Society does so much to preserve 
Um, information is kind of interesting. When I first moved to Rochester a little over 20 years ago, <laughs> one of the first things that I heard was Tarzan is from Rochester. <laughs> exactly. And I thought, well, that's interesting. I never knew that. And shortly after I moved here, I walked through the Historical Society, and wouldn't you know it, they have a picture and a poster of Tarzan. And so um, the Hoffmans, Frederick and, and Patricia Hoffman, um, established a fund in memory of Frederick's father, Dr. George Hoffman, who Excellent. was a physician here in Rochester. Um, the Historical Society actually has some um, things that were donated from Dr. Hoffman, and Frederick and Patricia said, we really want to be able to support the Historical Society in an ongoing way. And so they created a fund. And then um, when they both passed away, there was some pretty significant funding um, added to that fund through Patricia's will. And so the Hoffman name lives on through the memorabilia that's displayed at the Historical Society and also through the fund that supports the Historical Society to help them carry on their mission. Another name that many people will recognize is Ginger Miller. Exactly. Ginger was right. so involved in so many things in our community. Um, she was involved as um, a board member of the Community Foundation, was actually the president of both Fulton County and Northern Indiana Community Foundations at one point. Um, unfortunately, she passed away way too early and um, had an estate gift included in her will. And that helped um, establish the Ginger Miller Higher Education Scholarship. The neat thing about this, a lot of the scholarships that we have are for students who are graduating seniors. This one is actually for students pursuing a higher education degree. Excellent. So if somebody's going for graduate work or doctorate work or something beyond their undergraduate, this fund actually helps um, stu support students for that. So it's kind of neat to see how that um, is something a little bit different than the standard, what we normally see with scholarships and, and continues to keep Ginger's. She was, she was a huge advocate for education. She was indeed. Um, among the many other things that she was an advocate for. And... Um, so this scholarship helps carry on her legacy and be able to, to show some of the things that she valued. And then another name that may not be quite as familiar, but um, Grace Miller. Thank you. Um, Grace was involved in so many things in our community. She was. Um, I had the opportunity to meet her as a board member of the Community Foundation. When, when Grace passed away, she actually left um, her home to the Community Foundation. So um, that was able to be used to support, now be used to support grants in the community. Um, it's wonderful to see how that um, impact had happened. And it, it's kind of interesting as we look down this list of the way gifts happened, um, there's, there's so many different ways that things can happen, anywhere from a home being left to, in some cases, these were gifts of stock, um, sometimes they were gifts of property, things sure. like real estate. Um, the area around the Blackadder Sports Complex was part of what funded Mabel's gifts. And so there's, there's all those um, flexible types of things. And the neat thing is we're talking about some folks that have passed away a number of years ago, but their legacy is still the memory, sure, being, that legacy. still impacting our right. community. We're, we're still hearing the names of Blackadder and Hoffmans and Ginger Miller and Grace Miller because um, they wanted to see these These were things that were important to them, and they wanted to make sure that those things happened. So, exactly. Um, and, and so I really encourage folks, think about um, an estate gift. Um, think about the things that are valuable to you and the things that you've been involved in in your community and and think about who's going to support those when you're gone and and part of that can be um, through an estate gift you can still help do that you, sure. you can still help do that so it's it's neat to see how these things are continued to be supported so so th that's just kind of a snapshot of some of the things that um, have happened through estate gifts um, with the community foundation over the years so um, if folks have questions about that we're always happy to talk to you about that i'd always encourage folks talk to your um, financial advisor and especially um, attorneys if you don't have a will um, 
it's it's interesting if you don't have a will the state of indiana has a will for you you don't <laughs> whether, have any whether you like it or you, not. whether you like it or not you don't have any say in where things go really in that will they have it lined out so but if you do if you do have thoughts about you know what i'd really like to see this right. supported in an ongoing way um speak with an attorney i'd encourage you to to consider that and think about what are the things that you value and how can you help um, pass those along because there's a lot of times where not only can you give to something that was valuable to you while you were in the community but also help reduce um, estate taxes sure. or or tax burdens for those that you're passing on make it a win-win all around make it a win-win right? all around so you can you can be the one that directs that instead of the state of indiana saying you have to give this to this person or this organization so um so i'd encourage folks to think about that and and thank you to those who have included those and and it's wonderful to see as these gifts continue to go because next year at this time we'll be granting out from these funds right. to be able to help support these organizations and and these names will continue to live on in our community so so just a quick reminder scholarship applications you have until friday um, to get those completed if you have any questions don't hesitate to give allison heidi our scholarship coordinator um, a call and talk about that. Um, Kiwana Union Township Community Endowment, Fulton County Women's Giving Circle, um, applications, community support, grants, and impact grants. All those are available. All of that information is available at nicf.org. Um, you can like us on Facebook, Northern Indiana Community Foundation. We try and put information out about um, what's going on with the foundation and then um, if folks have a question they want to give us a call 224-3223 or you can always stop by our office here at 715 main street in rochester we'd love to talk to you about any questions you may have or ideas you may have for our community that the foundation may be able to help with brian johnson as always thank you very much good information today thanks tom get those scholarship applications we're working on that's right thanks brian